So here I talk through this challenging snake pit puzzle by Ken Endo. It has a really nice use of these uh, corner clues at the start. You probably spotted this as you were working through it, but uh, take effect, this corner cell can't be an end. It has to use these three cells. That keeps it from being part of the two, the six, or the other two. Um, this corner, this five, has to have enough space to get out. Uh, it has three end cells which are going to block it. The only way it can take five total cells is to use this cell. Come over, cross, and down. This corner, this three, has to take three cells, but if it reaches over one, two, three to here, or to here, or to here, it's going to end on a cell which can't be a snake end, so it's forced to do this uh, L shape. And in this case, we can actually extend out some logic to the cells we know like this, because of the end rules. It actually isolates this cell which will have to be part of the four. That isolates this cell, which will have to be part of this larger eight. Like this. And you might not spot it at the start, but this top uh, corner also is has a fair amount of deterministic logic around it, the same way the other three did. And the reason it's tougher to see is that uh, you may not recognize sort of how this end working with this six or this two matter. Um, the thing you should see, uh, let's first sort of consider a situation where the two comes out either to these cells. This end can either go two cells, uh, which would now touch another two, which isn't allowed, or it can go three cells and connect to a six, but this remaining piece has to come uh, and connect to this other six. So the first thing to see in this corner is that the two comes uh, up or to the left. So something like this. This end is gonna then either come down or to the right, but it's gonna form a six. So we know the start, this is a six end. And now uh, the thing to do is to actually see uh, that if this comes down, I'll just sketch this in briefly. One, two, three cells. How do you take six cells from this end? Uh, four, five, that can't go further. Uh, four, five, six, that's ending on a non-end cell. Four, five, six, that's now touching another six. There is no way you can fit a six shape in if this end comes down on the left. And so all this is one of the harder or hardest dis d uh, deductions in this puzzle. One way to start is to use all of these the four corners. And in this top corner, see we have a two to the left, six to the top. We now have to do the same mapping that we did over here. Say, so how do we actually get six uh, cells in the snake? It can't come down. Four, five, six, that'd be an issue. Four, five, six, it would end here, so it has to come over. This again can't come down. Five, six would be bad. It has to only come across. This is the one option for it. Which you actually know at the start of the puzzle. We can do a little more still with this six now. It can't uh, come up this way. It's not gonna touch this, so it ha has to come through this channel like this. Uh, it can come here, here right now it looks like, but it's going to take one more cell uh, to get finished. It can't take this cell, so it's going to take one of these, one of those, and we'll sort of keep that as the state for right now. We'll come back to it in a bit, but while we focused on the corners a lot, what we want to do is focus on the center, and you might have noticed at the start we have this two by two box, which will be pretty tricky to, to fill. It certainly doesn't take a single snake. <clears throat> it also can't take a, a two cell snake. That would leave behind two more cells, but those cells will have to both become part of this eight and the eight clues don't allow it. So what you'd actually see at the stars, it's gonna be a three snake uh, taking three of the cells. The fourth unused cell will become part of the larger eight. And we actually, because of working in this corner, actually know one of the, the, the cells. Uh, so this can't be the eight cell. It's worth noting that this shape so far has five cells used, and if neither of these cells is a cell that's the interior one with an eight, it would have to come over and take these cells, and that would leave just seven in the shape. So either this cell or this cell is the way uh, this snake looks. And this is a three. 
uh, regardless of which of these cells it gets taken, we can mark things like these don't get used. Those are pretty key things to mark because they actually force uh, these connections from the adjacent cores. We can simply mark that these don't get used. And it's going to be the case that whether it's this or this cell that's the 8, the remaining one has to come out this way or come out this way. And so it's not going to be coming out. If it went this way, it would be making a three cell long snake. And so this is a, a solid edge. And so you get this sort of picture in the center. And now uh, what's really required is to just map the, the possibilities uh, and see how they work out. And I actually need to do a little more on this left side so that I force only one and not uh, the other uh, situation of the eight to work. Um, there's a different place you can also think about, and that's down here with how this clue and, and the six will work. This clue isn't a two. It has to be something that comes like this or something that comes like this. And the six will do the opposite. So there is a kind of step you can do now at, on, on this edge, which is to say that because of how these two clues both have to be uh, larger than two cells, these twos have to be along the edges and, and split out. But, um, you can make headway here, but I think it's easier to make headway over here that after we've actually marked these sixes in, this clue uh, can't be an end of a snake, so it has to come through like this. And that tells us the shape that tells us at least these three cells come together. And now we're at a place where when we do the counts, we'll see how this eight has no options for it uh, besides this cell. So if, if this isn't used, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's too short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's too long. This is the center eight. This has one, two, three, four cells so far. It's worth thinking about uh, these, these cells up top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if the eight came up. It could take either of these and get a seven, but the other end is going to need to be a new snake and come out and take this, so it can't take more. So there's not an option coming up. If it comes over, that's too short. So it's going to be forced to come down. And this is where it intercepts the things that you're talking about in, in this corner about two large clues. The six comes across, it needs two for this end. Take these cells. That now finishes this group. We see it's going to be nine large in size. This cell has to come up. This will have to be the four. This is a two or three. We don't know what yet. You'll see if it's a two, uh, this cell will have to become at least another two. Uh, that would be an issue, so this is a three. The four takes the last cell here. That now isolates this cell. This has to come up. It forms a two. We now have to uh, think carefully about uh, this edge. And in some part, this two by two box still has some limitations to it. There can be two distinct cells for these dots. Uh, and they would, for instance, come up or come across and then potentially extend, or they can actually connect as a, as a three cell snake. But let's see if this comes over to the right using this edge. It's gonna have at least three cells in it. If it takes one more, it's gonna get pinned by the other end, and so it will form a four long snake in total. And if it doesn't take any more, it's gonna be a three next to another three. So in all situations, that boundary can't be crossed. You'll now see that that means this boundary has to be crossed. If it's not crossed, we're going to have a two by two box, which can't divide into a single snake. So we learn this. Have the four having to come up because of this end. This takes at least three. If these connect, it puts a five next to a five. So that's not possible. Now this cell has to be part of a snake, but it can't be a part of a snake of size two, so it's gonna to have to be part of this three. 
And the last decision is if these come together or not. If they came together, it's a five next to a five. Instead, it's just another two of the three. So, you know, this, this puzzle, once you see how to work through the corners and center, is, is quite clever. But it's, it's, it's pretty tough, particularly this upper left corner, which has only one option for a six snake uh, to get filled at the start. And then the center, how we, we know we're going to form a, a three-cell snake with an eight in one of these boxes and the remaining eight coming out. You essentially coalesce to where you only have an option on the right side and not the top side for that to get through. So a lot of the, the thinking has to do with uh, packing of, of snakes into tight spaces. It uses these, these clues well. So hopefully this is a master class in how to get through snake pick, pit X type puzzles. And when we feature more in the future, you'll, you'll have uh, some more weapons in your arsenal to get through these, these logically.